Hello, hello, and welcome to another Chemnitz video. Lucas from Chemnitz here with Rebecca from Chemnitz. Today we're going to dye some more yarn. <laughs> with the thing that we use to dye those shirts that leaked when it said that it was mess free. <laughs> That's right. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here with my six, almost seven-year-old Lucas, and we are going to dye some yarn using a mess free contraption. That and the people who built it like it's not mess free, but that's what it says. <laughs> you might remember when we dyed shirts with it. That's right, you could see that other video. <laughs> so what Lucas is very excitedly referencing is this swirl and style mess free tie-dye kit. I originally bought this kit to try dyeing yarn with this contraption, but the kids saw it and really wanted to dye some t-shirts. That video is available now. <laughs> I love you. This contraption has this dome and then these little valves on it so you can inject dye into it. And the plan is gonna be to put 100 grams of yarn, we're gonna, we're at least gonna attempt to put 100 grams of yarn in here, seal it up, and then we'll apply dye through these little holes. I don't think I'm gonna bother with the whole extended contraption to try to spin it because ultimately, that didn't really seem like, spinning it didn't add dye in any particular way. The interesting thing is the, you have a sealed container and you're injecting the dye in different spots. So, yeah. we will inject dye we'll into here. We'll have to turn this so that we can reach different holes. Yes, but we'll do that just in a pan versus using the whole contraption because I think it'll be easier. No, I wanna use the contraption. Well, we'll debate that off camera. <laughs> Today we're gonna use Stroll finger weight yarn. Yes, we're going to use Knitpick Stroll fingering weight yarn, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's a sock yarn I use a lot. We know it'll absorb dye really, really well. And we'll use the mess free contraption, which isn't really mess free. <laughs> I love you, honey. All right. Here's our yarn. Yes, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put a zip tie on it. All right, so I'm going to put a zip tie on here. We might need to take the zip tie off to fit everything in the contraption, but I like using these reusable nylon zip ties so you can like open and shut them as uh, an extra tie. But let me see if I can fit the yarn in here. Before we pre-soak the yarn, let's see if we can fit the yarn in here. So I'm just sort of squishing it up. Gonna be a tight fit. Uh, <laughs> not gonna lie, this might not work very well. I mean, I think if it'll... not, we'll dye it with squirt gun. Fine, we'll have a backup plan. But I'm gonna go try to um, Lucas. I think that if we wet it, then um, I might have an easier time doing this. Mm -hmm. So we'll go wet it and then attempt to get it in here. I think we'll be able to do it. I would just, I'm just going to need to be a little creative. Or we might need to um, have some coming out of here. We'll figure it out. And this is the yarn. We pre soaked it. Now let me go get the. No, no, we're not ready for the contraption yet. There's one more thing I need to do. Add vinegar! <laughs> That's right. In order to dye yarn with food coloring, you need to have a protein-based yarn like wool that we have here. Um, you'll need the food coloring. We'll need heat, which will probably steam set the yarn in a steamer basket later. And then we need acid. And so I added some vinegar to this so that way the acid will already be in our yarn once we start adding the food coloring to it. We off camera mixed up two colors, a red, which had six drops of the color white red dissolved in some warm water in one of the bottles that came with the kit, and then a deep purple that we did two drops black, two drops blue, two drops pink, and two drops base crimson. Wait, that was three. Sorry, you're right, three drops base crimson. And now we are gonna attempt to get this yarn into here. We are now going to attempt to fit the yarn into this contraption. We will see how this goes. I feel, I'm actually feeling a little optimistic about it. Um, the question is if we'll, oh yeah, it's a lot easier to compress the yarn while it is wet 
um, than when it is dry and fluffy. Oh, honey, mommy doesn't need help for this part. Okay. Just was helping a little. Bit. I know, sweetie. Guys, I'm having sticking out. Honey, I know. Mommy, mommy is trying. This is a little frustrating. Okay. Cause see, I want to make sure that none of the yarn is sticking through the plastic edges, which just means I have to very carefully go around. And we did it. We actually did it. We have the yarn completely in here. Before I mess it up, I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in with, if I can, there we go. The, these yellow things are the like seals that will keep it from falling apart. We even got the zip tie in here. Okay, Lucas, can you pass me the other pink cap? I'm gonna need the holder. Fine, here, give me. Here, screw it all. We are gonna do this. Okay, at Lucas's insistence, I used the holder. Fine. <laughs> Let's take a look at this yarn. So you hold on to the handle. Or actually, here, I'll let you do it. Can you spin the thing? Whee! Yeah. I mean, you can spin it. It's not like, oh, I think you may have accidentally, did you untwist it? No. Okay. Um, so it can be spun. I think we probably put the song wrong. I'm not going to worry about that. This does allow the device to technically sit here where it's not really supposed to spin within the handle, but it does. We put the hook up up here, then we can, we're, yay. We're gonna. We can, Lucas. It's gonna lock in. No, no, it doesn't lock in. So in theory, like you can put the, the thing on here and spin it around on this contraption. I will let Lucas do it that way because that's what he wants. Um, but this is not mess proof or mess free. And let's start. And then gently, gently squeeze. Very gently. It seems we are getting some red. We are getting some red. Okay, now stop. Let's let's pull it back so that way people can see. Okay, we've got some red. A now little bit of mess. All right, let's let's spin it and pick a different hole. Which hole do you want to do? That one. Okay. Let's try some purple. Okay, and I've already got color on my hands. And this time we're with doing food coloring. Press it all the way in before and squeeze very gently. There you go. So apparently this is what our purple looks like. Yeah, it looks a lot like grape Kool-Aid to me. Can I do one? Yeah. Okay, why don't I do, why don't I flip it? And I will do some red right here. Let's see. Okay, so I have it right here. And I'm now going to gently press. And you can see the color is spreading through the yarn, but it is also going down. Um, a lot. It's going down, it's going moving around a lot. So like over here, let's see. I can't see what's going on from my spot, nor can I see it on the monitor. But I did a bunch of squeezes there and whoa, that went down pretty far. That's fun. It's making a big difference this time. Okay, you want to do one like here? Yeah. And I should I hold it like this? Oh, oh, put it in, put it in fast, okay? Push it. You have to push it in first. There you go. There you go. Now let's. There you go. This yarn is at least brown. Okay. We're almost out, and I'm not gonna plan on making more color. Do you want to do? Where else do you want to put the purple? Do you want to do some red? Are you want to put some up there? Okay, and you've got more red. So where do you want to put red? After this, we'll get. After this, we will get. Oh, careful! Put it, put it straight in, look, honey. It's coming out everywhere. After this, we'll. Get more colors and make a. Tr well, I'm not gonna get more colors, honey. Can't we have a bit more? This is barely getting any color. Well, you know. See? Yeah, I mean, I agree to an extent, but that's part of the problem with this system. So you put, and part of the design of this is that you put color in some places and not others because you're pretty limited. 
but if you want, I don't think all the color is necessarily in yet. You can now put it on here and you can try, uh, oh, why is it locked in? What? Okay. This is weird. How did I get it to spin round and round and around before? And now it's locking. Maybe it has to go this way to spin. I have no idea if this is going to do anything. I mean, I feel like the colors um, may move a little bit. Uh, we can see, oh gosh, it is everywhere. We can see some color breaking, but uh, now we are going to leave this outside and let it sit and see what happens. But look, the colors, um, we don't know how far into the middle they've gone, but the colors are there. Okay? Okay, we'll fill in more color if, with if, if if we need more color, we'll fill it in with squirt guns. Right, or we'll do a different yarn with that. Well, the point of this is to see like what kind of yarn we can get from this kit. But I need to go clean up. So why don't I'm we go... I'm gonna have some. Why don't we go wash hands? <laughs> so honey, what do you think of this project? Uh, what do you wish? That we had more dye. That we had more dye? Well, I can tell you that if we kept putting the dye in those same spots, it wouldn't necessarily spread further. And so... But we didn't get any in a couple spots. Well, but did you know that we just used the exact same amount of dye that we dyed two t-shirts with? Granted, it's a different type of dye, it's a different type of project, but, I mean, we have something here. Now, there's a few cool things I want to show you. What do you see happening around our purple? It's bluing! It's bluing. So what color would you call that purple color right now? Purple. The color in the center. What, what does that look to you? What does it almost look like? Purple. It looks like a really dark purple and then the color around the outside is a blue, right? Yeah, well, I call it purple. Purple. Okay. Well, so that's because... I call it purple. That's because purple the, the red colors that we added in that mix mixture are going to bind to the yarn faster than the blues. So when we open this all up, there could be a lot of blue towards the center or a lot of white. We don't really know. Either way, this thing is pretty fun and actually it's not totally jam-packed. And I can't tell if it's leaking. I did just spray it with water because there was dye all around the outside. So I sprayed that in my driveway, which is why we're now on the grass. <laughs> so now what do you think we do? Time to wash the yarn. Well, that we could wash the yarn now, but we need to apply some heat for the colors to set. So instead, we're gonna do sort of what we did last time. We're gonna let this sit outside overnight. It's gonna be a little on the cold side, so it's not gonna get super, super hot, but we're gonna let it sit in the contraption for a while, at least a day, and then probably tomorrow, we'll go and steam set it, so that way that those colors really, really bind really, really, really well. Sound like a plan? Okay, and now it's time to say bye. Well, for now. Bye for now. <laughs> Say goodbye to the well, contraption. Okay, let's put it down. I hope we don't have any more messes. Me too. It's been probably around a week later and our contraption has been outside for all of that time. Now, let's see. If we can undo this mess free and dragon. Alright, honey, why don't you let mommy uh, uh. Why don't you let mama try it? Alright. Roll on tap now. Yeah. Um, okay, so yes. now. Yes! Now My I. Yawns ready! Well, hold on, honey. Hurry. honey. Hold on, okay? It's not yet ready. I gotta. The yawns could come out in a. I gotta untwist minute. it. Okay, let's take off. Why can't I get this thing off? Uh, okay, I got this thing off. I didn't break it, but honestly, I don't know if I'm ever gonna use this thing again. And now let's take a look at the colors. So that blue, or that, sorry, it was a purple we mixed. Lucas observed that the colors did break. And it's bluing. But it did rest down here on the bottom. And, and it's bluing. Yes, it's bluing. Um, and I did notice some colors pool to the bottom. This was where it was resting on the grass for however long it was. It has been cool outside, so, oh my goodness. Um, with some close to freezing temperatures. 
we did have some real below freezing weather while uh, we were we had this outside, but it also got warm. But I do plan to steam set this in a steamer basket just to make sure that the colorway is set. And aha, uh -huh, here we are opening it up. And it's split. And it's what? Split. Yes. Oh, yes. I split it. Whoa! Cool. The red is pinking. Yes, the red is pinking. Here, let me zoom you in. Okay, that the wasn't. The red my has some pink with it. Yes, so, so it, it seems we dyed a four color yarn. Today. Yes, um, I believe we used the base red for this, which does have, I think, some yellows in it. It has red 40 and red 3. Maybe the acid, I, I mean, I think, or just we could have some dilute color. It's not necessarily that we're seeing like some breaking and some spread. I would be curious if the acid concentration here was so high that we would see a pink halo, but from our purple, we have a blue halo. So I don't think that it's breaking necessarily, but yes, we do have, well, five colors if you include white. Do you include white? Yep, five. That's five colors in one yarn. Red, pink, blue, purple, and white. Well, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, honey. Now I'm actually, and look, we even fit a zip tie in here. I'm actually gonna remove the yarn. Wowzer! What do you think? Well, it's nice. And it seems we got some brown. So that means, Ooh, yeah! So that means six colors! Woohoo! <laughs> I love you, honey. All right, we will go steam set this. Um, but we've got a beautiful, wild, variegated yarn. The colors did not spread very far from where they were in here, but uh, you know we did have to compress the yarn a lot to get it to fit. So maybe if we had, say, mini skeins, oh no, we might have to use this again and try it with mini skeins. I'll explain that to you in a moment. Um, maybe if we were gonna do this with mini skeins, uh, then we could actually like try spinning it and then the yarn would like spin around and maybe get some dye. So yeah, certainly this isn't mess free, but I'm not gonna get rid of it yet. I'm gonna go ahead and steam set this on uh, my stove top. Since I've already used the contraption for non-food dyes, I don't want to then put this into containers that I would use for food preparation, even though this was dyed with food coloring. But if I had started with the brand new contraption and gone straight to food coloring, then I might be okay just microwaving it and using some of my cooking pots and pans. But that is sort of where I personally distinguish the difference between what I am comfortable with doing. So now I'll go show you my steamer setup. This is my steamer basket. Um, it's just a stainless steel pot with this little steamer insert. Uh, this is Salt Brand from Bed Bath & Beyond. I mean, I don't know if it's sold elsewhere, but I really, really like it. And so now I am going to take the yarn and I do not see on the aluminum pan any evidence of dye and actually my hands are completely clean. So I'm pretty sure that it's well set already, but I do want to go ahead and steam it for, um, since it's not hot yet, I'm gonna steam it for 30 minutes. The 30 minutes are up, so I'm gonna turn off the heat. We are nice and steamy. I'm gonna let the yarn cool completely, and then we'll go wash it with Lucas. We are back. And what are we gonna do now? Wash the yarn. Three, two, one. Thanks for turning on the water. And I'm gonna add a little bit, do you know what this is? So Okay, yeah, a little bit of dish soap. And this is where we check for bleeding. Now, if you had enough acid in the pre-soak, there should not be any bleeding, um, even with the red. Well, thanks, honey. <laughs> um, and there is not, Lucas, do you see any color in our water? No. What does the water look like? Water. Okay, well, you know, we don't need We're any more right now. We're filling it up so that way the water gets really pre-soaked. Well, no, no, this isn't well, the pre-soaked. after soaked. Yes, after soaked, AKA washing. So, since there is no bleeding, hold on, sweetie. Since there is no bleeding, um, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse the soap out and we'll finish washing this off camera. And then we will put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it to dry, and then, oh, hold on. Lucas, hold on. <laughs> we'll hang up the yarn to dry, and then we'll come back for some... 
See you later. Well, yes, but do you know what that's called? Goodbyes. Okay, it's also called conclusions. Okay. Can you say that word? Conclusions. Yep, see you in a minute. Here is the yarn we dyed with Lucas's contraption, and it's actually pretty cool. That being said, there's no way I think I'm going to ever use this thing again, unless, of course, you really want me to. And so if you really want me to play around with this, uh, give it another shot. Please let me know down in the comments. But ultimately, I think that this is just really goofy and out there. And, well, as Lucas will tell you over and over, they lied. It's not mess free. I have no idea if Lucas is going to want to keep this for his ever-growing personal stash or list it in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop so he can earn some more graphic novels. Uh, but either way, you should go and check out the Etsy shop because it's filled with hand-dyed yarn featured in my videos and it's a really great way for you to get some gorgeous yarn and support the content here on the channel at the same time. There will be a shop link down in the video description. I have a feeling Lucas is going to be a little bummed with the volume of white left, but let's go see what he has to say. Hi! I don't quite remember doing this. You don't? I know, I forgot to film your reaction! Well, I don't know what it looks like, but I have a feeling it's pretty neat. Ready? Mm-hmm. to knit it into a spinjitsu tornado thing. <laughs> oh yeah? And I can spin around. Or I can, mommy can knit it into a neck pillow. <laughs> okay, so you want to keep it's this? Yeah. Or, or do you want to put it in my shop? Let's keep it. See, I want to show you something interesting here. Light blue, darker blue, darkish blue, purple. Okay. Light red, darker red, darker red, red. Lucas, maybe instead of mommy knitting with it, I'm going to teach you how to knit. And I got some special toys that are great for kids who want to learn how to make things with yarn. Yeah, I know, but uh, I still don't want to learn how to knit. Not my idea of fun. My idea of fun is playing Pokemon. <laughs> oh, and next talk. On our next Lucas from Chemnitz video, we're going to dye a Pikachu and a Pokeball. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right, honey. Uh, what should people... Oh, hi, Amy. What should people Sub do? Subscribe! Yes, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel and... See you next time. Wait, before you go, please don't mind our dog, Amy from Chemnitz, when he barks. <laughs> Well, please subscribe to the Covenants channel. We even have an, another channel for my videos. <laughs> nope, nope, we don't. We don't. We just have a different section for them. Um, <laughs> nope, nope, not yet. Someday. <laughs> Someday you can have your own channel, okay? I mean, our, my own section for all of my videos. Oh, yes, yes, you're right. There is a playlist for all of Lucas's videos. And we shall see you.